Welcome everyone, this is Kathy Vartilli from the Intimacy Dojo and this is Weed Mahalko from readaboutsex.com. We have another video where we talked about what to do if you screw up. And we're asking now, what do you do if your partner screws up? How do you bring that up in an open way that they don't feel defensive, they don't shut down too much, mm -hmm. and you still get to the other side of this? Make sure you watch the first video because none of my jokes will make sense if you haven't watched any. Um, so <laughs> what do you do? Um, if the other person screws up, I mean, really, the, the first thing, and this is useful for any kind of scenario, um, understanding that, that most people, including yourself, mm -hmm. probably don't handle new information well or surprises really well right at first, um, especially around screw-ups. Yes. So when your partner or a friend or your boss or, or whomever, when they screw up, um, the first thing is to just recognize that you're probably not handling it well. <laughs> like, like have your like, wow, look at me freaking out or look at me feeling enraged or, um, you know, unfairly treated or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Like get a lock on that um, because that will often help you stay in your body and, and start to interrupt your, your pattern. Yeah, if you're beating yourself up or blaming yourself yeah. or trying to shut it down, it's going to come out sideways. Yeah, um, so, so get a grip on that. Um, the next thing to do is thank your partner for sharing, mm -hmm. for telling you in the first place, because Lord knows how many of us have had people like not tell us things for months mm -hmm. or weeks or whatever. Um, sometimes you can flip those two. You know, when somebody gives you bad information, immediately thank them. Yeah. Because what it does is it jujitsu's your brain a little bit and like, oh, we're thanking them for bringing us this bad news. I'm not supposed to be so upset. <laughs> like, and that's really useful. So figure out which one you works better for you and then stick to that routine. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to flip out and basically take a bigger bucket of muck and toss it on the fan that is now spewing <laughs> you know their shit the shit has hit the fan and now you go and you're like oh yeah well here's my bucket <laughs> you don't want to do that mm -hmm. um so thank them get a lock on yourself that, that you're having an emotional reaction mm -hmm. to to new information breathe and then what i do is i try to get as clear as i can what my concerns are, mm -hmm. what are my fears and concerns, and what are my needs, and then what's my request. Yeah. So the other thing that that does is it kind of keeps me in my thinking head. Not that you're trying to shut down your emotive body and, and push that stuff down, but basically if you're giving me bad information right now, mm -hmm. it really helps me to figure out, to assess the situation. What are my concerns? What are my needs? What's my request? And then if it's like, well, okay, I can... I can wait a minute, yeah. like it's not a life or death situation, then I can have my emotive freak out, whatever I need to do, and then get back to the situation. But if you're looking for solutions, your brain doesn't, your subconscious brain doesn't feel so disempowered and frightened. You, you do. There's, yeah. there's solutions, there's requests, there's things I could do differently in the future, and you feel more empowered. Yeah, and some people don't work well going into fix it mode immediately. Yeah. So that's why I do needs, concerns, needs, then requests. Mm -hmm. um, Rather than we must fix this situation, so once you figure out what your what your uh, concerns or fears are, um, you get a lock on that. What your your needs are, get a lock on that, and then and then you voice them, and you can voice all three. Yeah. Okay. So in our example from the last video, it you know bonehead me left our kid at the store, and I can't remember which <laughs> store it was. I forgot my kid was with me, and I'm telling my partner I don't have our kid. So my so like if, 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 you, if you did that to me, um, then first I'd be like, okay, <laughs> thank you so much for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fruit of my loins is somewhere in the city. <laughs> okay, what are, my, what are my concerns? Our son is already dead. Yeah. You know. Um, be really frightening. Yeah. Or, or mentally scarred or, you know, being taken advantage of by some nefarious character. Um, we will never find him or her. Uh, they will be mentally handicapped for the rest of their life by this traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. um, I will go to jail because I'm about to kill you for being such a bonehead. Um, 
and I will never be able to trust you again. Like, let's say those are my concerns and fears. Um, my needs is I need you to find my freaking son. Um, I, you know, I, I need to feel like I am somehow taking action and empowered right. in this situation, which I did not create. Mm -hmm. um, I eventually need to locate our child mm -hmm. and make sure that they're well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I need you to apologize and I need to know from you somehow I can count on you that this will not happen again. Right. I need some sort of reassurance. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be up to you to figure that out. Yeah. Um, and then by vocalizing those things, now that I've gotten to my request, I'm like, oh, so my request is you're going to apologize a lot to me <laughs> later, but we're going to call 911 and 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 List trace your states. I want to see your receipts. I want to know where the stores you're at, and we're gonna we're gonna figure this out. Yeah. And 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 I need that that to happen now. Yes. And if you're on the receiving end of that, if you can have space for them to feel and share what they want to feel without blaming or you left him at the store last week and you aren't perfect either, it's really easy. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, at least I left him at a mall. You love doing that at a flea market. Yeah. <laughs> it's really easy for it to get the blame and bring up things from 10 years ago mm -hmm. and try to yeah. justify when, if you can just have space for the other person, it de-escalates the mm -hmm. situation and gets to resolution yeah. a lot faster. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now go find my kid! <laughs>